Okay, so we want to do a quick video on the adaptation of the xylem vessels in transporting water and minerals. There are three main adaptations that you have to know about the xylem vessels in their structure and how it helps them transport water and minerals. The first one that we have to talk about is something called the hard lignified walls to prevent collapse when under tension. We have a lot of things to explain here. The first thing is we have to talk about tension uh, and we also have to cover collapse. Tension happens when the water at the top of the xylem leaves the xylem vessels because it enters the leaf and thus it creates a low pressure at the top. And when it creates a low pressure at the top, we will say that the xylem vessel is under tension. So why is this a big problem if the xylem vessel is under tension? Imagine a straw... Okay, if you have a straw and you suck on the straw, you will also create a low pressure at the top of the straw, as, as I'm uh, showing it to you. And if you were to put a finger uh, at the bottom and just cover the bottom of the straw, what will actually happen is the straw will start to collapse. The wall of the straw will move inwards. So when the wall of the uh, straw collapses, the water will not be able to move up the straw anymore, no matter how much you try to suck on it. Right? So in this case, what we will just say that is the straw collapses. And the same concept can also happen in the xylem, especially because the pressure at the top can become extremely low. It will be under great tension. But will the xylem wall actually collapse? The answer is no, it will not collapse because the lignified wall is strong and rigid. It is not as flimsy as like the plastic walls of the straw, so there is no risk of the xylem vessels actually collapsing under tension at all. So the plants do not have to worry about that happening. The second thing that xylem vessels also have are pits, and pits, if you remember, are just the unlignified areas where it is just the cellulose wall, where I've highlighted in green. And pits are also important within the xylem vessels to allow lateral movement of water and minerals. What I mean by that is, Sometimes within the xylem vessels, blockages may occur for many reasons. Maybe an infection happens in the plant, fungi starts growing inside the xylem vessel. So as you can see, I've highlighted some grey areas over there. And in that grey area, the xylem vessel is blocked. So the water is going up the xylem vessel and the water and minerals will not be able to move upwards anymore due to the block. But the the plant does not have to worry in this case because the water can just move sideways through the pit enter another xylem vessel and continue moving upwards. That is what is meant by lateral movement of water and minerals. And the third very important thing is the fact that the xylem vessel is a hollow and empty vessel, which means to say there's no protoplast blocking the pathway of the water and minerals. Imagine if I'm just drawing out three plant cells here. You can see the water and minerals moving through the cell by osmosis, but the, the substances will have difficulty because the protoplast, which is the living parts of the cell, the cytoplasm, cell membrane, organelles, they will impede the movement of water and minerals. That means the water and minerals can move upwards, but they'll have great difficulty moving upwards because there's a lot of resistance. But because the xylem vessel is hollow, the water and minerals will not have any resistance in moving upwards whatsoever. So these are the three main adaptations of the xylem vessel in of the xylem vessel in transporting water and minerals.